Hey everyone, in this video I'll walk you through how to replace the cartridge bearings and bike wheels with a modern compression style hub bearing interface. And don't worry if you don't own a fancy press with all the proper bearing drifts, I'll be doing this how-to with a homemade $5 bearing press. The wheels I'm servicing in this video are my Hunt 35 carbon gravel disc wheels, but they have Novatec hubs which are really common in many other road, gravel, and mountain bike wheels these days. Now recently these bearings started to roll pretty rough and I'm suspecting that there's some dirt or grit that got in there, but we're gonna find out once we open them up. Schematically, the hubs on this type of system are actually pretty straightforward. The inside of the hub is basically a cylindrical shell with internal flanges on either end to act as bearing stops so that they don't get pressed in too far. Now the bearings themselves are single units and they're press fit into the hub shell from either side. Also, there's usually some type of alloy sleeve or a spacer that goes in between the two bearings as well. Then on the outer side, there are the end caps, which sit just inside the bearing's inner race and usually have some type of dust seal to keep out the grit. Now the end caps also serve as the actual contact point with the frame and fork. Now holding it all together is the axle, which can come in many different forms, but many modern bikes are using the through axle style, which means that the axle is one long cylindrical shaft that threads directly into the frame or fork. So that's the anatomy of the hub bearing interface. Let's sort out how to actually remove the bearings that need to be replaced. Now, there's no magic technique to getting the old bearings out, but there are a couple of things to look out for. Now, most of the time, I just tap them out with a thick flathead from the inside. This, of course, requires moving the inner sleeve to one side to gain access to the inner race of the bearing. Now, sometimes you can just force it to one side with your fingers, but in other cases like this, you need a little extra leverage to slide it over. Now, I like to use the rubber handle of a pair of pliers, as you don't want to gouge the inner surface of the sleeve with a screwdriver or anything like that. Basically anything rigid but with a soft contact patch would work well here. Now once the inner sleeve is offset, you can stick a flathead in one end and tap out the bearing from the inside with a mallet. Now in general, you don't want to apply pressure to the inner race of a bearing, but typically you're going to be replacing these bearings anyways, so it's fine in this case. Also, don't go too crazy and bash it all on one side. You want to tap it until the bearing just starts to move and then rotate the sleeve and hit the bearing from the opposite side and kind of go back and forth little by little so the bearing comes out as straight as possible to avoid damage to the inner hub surface of the shell. Now it shouldn't take too much force and eventually the bearing will pop right out. You can go ahead and remove that inner sleeve now to gain access to the opposing bearing and tap it out using the same method. Be sure not to gouge the inner surface of the hub shell throughout this entire process. Now just as I suspected, there's some moisture that got in here and one of the bearings is showing signs of rust. It's pretty likely that the grease was eaten away by the cleaners that I've been using, but more on that later. In any case, this bearing is pretty much toast and needs to be replaced with a fresh one. Now once both bearings are out, you want to give the whole hub a good wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol to start clean. And then before you press in the new bearings, be sure to apply some grease to the hub shell where the new bearings will seat. Now once you're ready to install the new bearings, you can use a nice bearing press if you have one. Ideally, you'd also have a set of properly sized bearing drifts, which are the little fittings that align with the bearings and guarantee that they get pressed in straight. Now, these are really nice to have, but most home mechanics don't do this repair often enough to justify the cost. Now, if you're in this boat like me, you can also make a perfectly functional bearing press using some threaded shaft, washers, and nuts. The shaft needs to be small enough in diameter to fit through the bearings, and the washers need to be large enough to fit all the way over the hub shell opening. The nuts also need to be large enough to seat pretty flush against the face of the washer so you can apply even force. But other than that, you can use almost any size hardware to make yourself a bearing press. And the sizes I'm using here are 5 16 diameter shaft with 1 and half inch diameter washers. Now without a proper bearing drift set, you can use a socket with the same diameter as the bearing's outer race, or even better, just use the old bearing to push in the new bearing as they're guaranteed to be the same size. The key here is that you don't want to push the new bearing in by the inner race as it can cause damage to the bearing in the process. So whatever you use, whether it's a drift, a socket, or the existing bearing, just make sure that the force is only applied to the outer race of the bearing as you're pressing it in. Now when you're ready to install the new bearings, you want to assemble the bearing press in this order. It'll go nut, washer, and then the hub, and then the other side of the hub shell will be the new bearing, a bearing drift, now this can be the actual drift, or a properly sized socket or the old bearing, and then you want to put a washer and then the outer nut on the end. Now keeping in mind that you're only pressing in one bearing at a time, you want to go ahead and snug up the press and make sure everything is as centered as possible. 
The first turns of the nut are the most crucial to ensuring that the bearing goes in straight. Now if your bearing does start to go in crooked, don't panic. And definitely don't just keep turning and hope that it'll straighten out. In this case, the best thing to do is to actually slide the whole bearing press over to the side that's sticking out and put a little bit more pressure until the bearing straightens out. Once it's straight again, you can recenter the bearing press and continue to turn the nut slowly, always keeping an eye on the bearing as it seats into the hub. As you're sliding in the bearing, you should feel a little bit of resistance, but it should slide in pretty smoothly. And then once you feel a sudden jump in resistance, the bearing is fully seated and there's no need to apply any more torque to the bearing press. Pressing in the other bearing follows the same process, with the one exception being to remember to install the inner sleeve first. You definitely don't want to forget this and have to pound out a brand new bearing to reinstall that sleeve. Now once you're done with both sides, make sure that the inner sleeve is centered with the axle hole and you're almost done. The last thing you want to do is to spread a layer of grease on the outer surface of the bearing and on the inner side of the end caps to serve as a bit of a barrier to moisture and dirt. Then you can reinstall the wheel with a lightly greased through axle and bask in the glory of buttery smooth bearings and a job well done. Now this demonstration was done on the front wheel, but the rear hub essentially follows the same process except that you'll likely need to remove the free hub first. Now depending on which type of free hub system your wheels use, it might be a little bit different, but most of them come off pretty easily. Now these wheels are the Hunt 35 gravel wheels which use Novatech hubs with the 6902-2RS size cartridge bearing. Now when you go to replace your bearings, just make sure to get the right size as they come in all different shapes and sizes. Bearings like the 6802 and the 6902 are pretty common for wheel hubs, but there are definitely other sizes and you can usually identify them by reading the model number on the dust seal embossed right on the cartridge bearing itself. Now a couple of other quick side notes. If you use this muck off pink nano cleaner stuff, which is super highly marketed as the perfect all around bike cleaner, be real careful around the bearings. I've recently learned from a couple of sources that it can eat away at the grease and allow water and grit to get in there and really wreak havoc on your bearings pretty quickly. Now I wasn't aware of this as I thought this cleaner was safe on all parts of the bike and I didn't learn my lesson until it was too late and these bearings started to ride really rough. On that note, however, I do also want to praise Hunt's customer service. I basically told them that I wasn't careful with the cleaning product that I was using, and I think I stripped away all the grease and destroyed my bearings. Then within 24 hours, a representative responded personally and basically just said, hey, it happens, and sent out four replacement bearings free of charge, including shipping that same day. So kudos to Hunt Wheels. Now I knew going in that this is one of the reasons that I purchased wheels from them, and so it was nice to see them deliver on their reputation for great customer service. Well, I hope this walkthrough was informative and perhaps gives you the confidence to try this repair yourself. I think hub service generally has a stigma of being complex and specialized, especially when you think back to servicing hubs with loose ball bearings and cone wrenches. But it's really not that bad, especially on modern hubs with sealed cartridge style bearings, and doing it yourself is certainly a rewarding experience. Anyways, that's going to do it for this how-to. Thanks for watching and subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.